Check in the box. Uh, coming up this morning, we do work week weather every Monday with Len and I, Len, of the National Weather Service. Also, uh, we're continuing to bring in our uh, parade of officials from the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands. Uh, this morning, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, we're getting the uh, chair of the, uh, she's the chair, I forget what her actual title is. She's like the big boss of the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Oh, she is the chief executive officer. That's the CEO. And, and, all, and all of the staff there and, and everybody in the scene they about call basically her refers CEO. to her as CEO. CEO Esther Munia yeah. of the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. She's Com- a great interview, too. This she's is awesome. I'm really, so excited really about this. Uh, and also we're getting Senator Tello Tidegui. This is pretty cool. We did a great story, an awesome uh, reportage from Sabrina Salas Matanani about this. Uh, isn't that crazy? How many of you guys getting up, punching in this morning, slaving away for the man, wishing you could get a raise, a dollar, two dollars, eleven thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we did a story on it. Uh, it's kuam.com. And Senator Tello has introduced a bill um, as a reaction, so she's coming in to talk about that. And then we're getting uh, Primo Rollin at a J uh, Veterans Commission. Yeah, so he is he is one of the leaders, and everybody knows uh, Roro from his work with the Guam Hogs Motorcycle Club and everything like that. But he's also um, a proud United States veteran. Gave us a absolutely stunning uh, soundbite last week on the news about how veterans have to be appreciated, recognized, taken care of, and and cherished as 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 Guamanians and as Americans and everything like that. So he's going to come on and talk about what's going on for Thursday's uh, Veterans Day ceremony, but also uh, many of the challenges that our beloved vets continue to face, which is a dreadful oversight. Right. Uh, 742. Let's go in with the Mayor's Council of Guam. We have uh, President uh, Mayor Jesse Alleg and also uh, Mayor Savares, uh, Melissa Savares of Daddy Doe. Uh, Guam's most populous village. We got the graphics, guys. We've been kind of talking about this, uh, and I saw the rollout uh, over the weekend, uh, Mayor Jesse. And this is the, uh, what is it called exactly? The gift of family. That's our, our uh, foster recruitment, foster care recruitment campaign uh, name. It's the gift of family. And we've done that. Uh, we're doing it because we feel that there is a need. There's a greater need to to recruit more families for our foster care system, as opposed to donating uh, food, I mean, yeah, food items or clothing, shoes. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of our people already do that. And um, so the foster organizations know that they receive a lot of help already from, from the island uh, when it comes to those types of things. But one of the things that we asked was, what is it that you need and how could we help? And the one thing they said was, we need foster parents, we need foster homes. And so the mayor's council uh, voted on it and we decided that it was best that instead of having a Christmas party that we would focus our efforts on uh, putting a a campaign together to recruit uh, at least 19 foster families. And so it is called the gift of family. But I I, want to let Mayor Savars talk more about that because I'm always talking about it and then I can talk about something else that we're doing in December uh, for for part of that campaign. So. did you want to play something or Mayor Savars, did you want to talk about the, our, our campaign since you've been with us from the very beginning? Well, you know, um, it's a, it, we, like you had mentioned, uh, Mayor Alec, with the um, uh, the numbers, there, how many foster children need homes and how many foster families we actually have registered with, um, with the Department of Public Health. So, of course, that, um, you know, that is our, our drive and and we're doing it collectively everybody is involved so uh we see the need mm. madam mayor could you could you speak to the uh, the criteria of of families or individuals that may that may actually qualify uh, to foster because you know i know a lot of people think it's like oh like you know i'm unmarried or i'm i'm a single parent you know like yeah. i probably don't qualify my first cousin actually uh she's a single mom and she's got three girls of her own already she is now fostering two wonderful uh young yeah. children and she's actually asking in our family chat like if, you know if we would do the same yes and so that that's what it is is you know um you know children are in need sometimes our families have crises in our communities and um uh, we don't know what what the situations may be but there are just not enough homes uh foster homes here and the criteria is um 
some uh, a family that is willing and you don't have to be husband wife you could be mm -hmm. a single parent uh you know um the um partners that have a place and of course it, it's a loving home uh that can accommodate a child in, in an emergency situation uh, the, the, you must have I've been to an orientation and you must the child must be able to have their own sleeping area um, they can you know they have to have their own bed they can't be on a food uh, on the floor or in in your bed you know or you're sharing a, a bed maybe if they come as siblings they can share like a, a full-size bed or a, you know um, uh, a bed with the, the sibling of if there are two you know children that come in together uh, but of course male and female cannot and, and the families that we're looking for you know we we know as mayors and that's why it's something that we took up is because we know who the families that we can personally approach uh, in some cases and and we're also you know working it that way uh, there's some empty nesters their children's their children have gone to college or have left and are not mm -hmm. there and so they have the extra space that they can accommodate and, and like you said Jason you have a cousin who's a single mom and had the extra space and was willing to take additional children to to be as part of their household and mm -hmm. and you know we look we're looking for families that have a big heart uh, you know, to to embrace these children. Of course, like I had mentioned earlier, some of them, we don't know what situation they're coming out of, but it's a, foster care is a temporary situation. It's a temporary placement for children. Mm -hmm. And um, so they can decide what age group they, they would like when they go through the training. And then they also need to get licensed. So Department of Public Health is a licensing process. Uh, and so um, that's what we're looking for. And we're working with both faith, all our faith-based organizations as well, to to try to recruit through the the parishes, through the churches, and um, because we know that we have people in the communities. Yeah, my my cousin's going around telling everybody she knows. She goes, you know, it's not my marital status that was the deciding factor. It is, can I provide a loving environment? And that's that's ultimately the the big deciding factor and she goes a lot of people qualify for this and they probably assume that they don't is there a salary yes. requirement uh mayors mm. no 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 there is you know they'll they'll come because during the, the application process you'll go through an orientation but during the application process you know there is a home inspection to make sure that you'll have the space you know that your house is conducive to to caring for a chi uh, additional child or, or children whatever the case may be and sometimes like sometimes it's so temporary because uh the parents one one of the parents already qualifies for housing but it's a matter of looking for that safe housing for them to to house their children in and you know one of the things that i might want to add to to that is uh one of the questions that came up during our conversations and putting this together was how about those families that are on um that are renting from gura public or public assistance mm. so the answer is yes they can certainly be foster parents uh they okay. still have to follow the criteria as far as you know a, a licensing goes um of course though their gura benefits and their their public assistance benefits will change uh, will change depending on how long the child is going to stay with them if it's temporary like mayor savaris had said sometimes there's just emergency placement uh then typically nothing changes uh, but if it's a longer term if they feel like it's a longer term because of, of whatever situation the children are in or the child is in then uh, public health will help the the foster uh, the potential foster parent work with Gura and with um, you know their their assistance programs to make sure that they comply and that they you know and that they also re continue to receive their benefits so one of the things that uh, a lot of people ask is so what do we get in return uh, and of course, like Mayor Sawar said, you have to have a big heart, right? That's definitely the one thing. I mean, if you don't have the heart, if you don't have the love, it's it's probably going to be a little difficult or a lot difficult. But there is financial compensation, and uh, it may not be enough to to give you a dinner at a hotel every night, but it's certainly you know compensation for the 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 
the things that you're going to do for this for this child or for the children. And there's there's also insurance that the children are covered under insurance, as you might know. And uh, there's also there's definitely all these other support groups like Harvest House, who is a partner in, in our in our campaign, and of course the Archdiocese of Agana as well. So there's so many different organizations that are willing to support all our fa- our foster uh, families and our potential foster families. Have you guys had any um, interest since you started rolling out the campaign? Yeah, oh yeah, we've actually, I mean, yes. Mayor Savares, um, I have to say that I'm just, and I always say it because I really am very grateful that Mayor Savares jumped on because she was, she is a, the largest village and she's got, a, you know, she's got a lot. She can tell you the stories, but I have also got, uh, received a lot of inquiries and, and just questions. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want is we want them to ask questions and we want them, we want to take these, these residents who are interested, the least bit interested to an informational meeting that Harvest House or yeah, Harvest House hosts every Thursday. And again, that's how we're partnering with Harvest House is because they already have these established meetings, informational meetings. We want to bring more people there so they can hear more about it, right? And they can make the decision after that and, and continue to discern and pray over uh, you know, their their abilities to to become foster parents. Uh, Mayor Savaris, did you want to add to that as far as- uh, Yeah, and you know, if even if you're a working parent uh, and you're worried you're gonna take a child in and they may need childcare, um, Department of Public Health works with the foster families to provide block grants for child care. So, you know, that would be something um, that I know people are worried about. What if I, I'm working and I, I, my boss won't let me take off to take care of the child? Uh, if you, the child needs child care, uh, there is block grant that public health will provide so that the child can be in a child care facility. Are you seeing a lot of um, a lot of uh, homes with uh, parents with children already? And it's the children actually encouraging the parents uh, to mm-hmm. get involved. Because I've heard a couple of cases like that where you know you have young children and they said, "Oh, mommy, daddy, I heard about this program. There are lots of kids in need. Can we please do this?" You know, and as soon as they get in, they're like, "Hey, this per- this young person's living with me now. They're my peer. This is my brother. This is my sister. This is a member of my family." And it's the kids who really drive, you know, that atmosphere of love. Yes, and you know, I know that um, there's some people that are inquiring because what happens is their child has a classmate or they've heard it from Mm. the school that, you know, and so because, uh, and so that was the case. If it's a short term, where are the children, if then they're in school age children, uh, where would would we have to transfer uh, to the school in our district area or attendance area? And so those were questions that came up. And um, if it's a short term, we will, tra- you know, transportation will be provided for the, if, if the, pa- the foster family cannot provide the transportation, of course, there's arrangements that will be made uh, to make sure that the child gets to school. But if it's long term and you have school age children and you're, they're there for more than a month, or, you know, they're going to be there with you long term, you would transfer the children and they'll go to the same school that your children will go to. You know, there's so many different uh, organizations um, and um, things that, uh, you know, the mayor's council do and can do. What was it about this particular issue that made you guys decide we want to do a campaign on on f- finding foster parents? I think what it was is Mayor, uh, mayor Alec actually went to a meeting with the uh, Department of Public Health and Social Services And he saw there's only 40, what is it, 40 families and 400 plus children. And, and, you know, and the shelters that we have, the emergency shelters for children are not enough. And so it's not about, like he said, giving food and clothing. It's about providing that safe haven for them and, you know, where are they going to go? And so, of course, we, uh, you know, you have to have a big heart, right? Uh, to be able to want to do this. And like I said, I went to an orientation several years ago. A a friend of mine said, hey, you know, I'm really interested. Uh, Do you want to go with me? And I'm I'm interested. But, you know, I'm also a caregiver for two elderly parents. And so uh, trying to juggle our schedule at work and then take care of my parents and then having, and then the space, you know, I, I could make the space, but um, 
you know, I have a 93 year old father and an 86 year old mom. Mm -hmm. And so trying to foster during the time that I'm also caring for them is, is going to be difficult, but it's something that's always, you know, been in the back of my mind, but I know that there's families that have, like I said, we know the empty nesters, uh, you know, they're by themselves. They're looking for things to do people to help is what it is. And, and so, um, you know, that's something that maybe Mayor Alec can add more to uh, his excitement. <laughs> well, that's it, actually. There's that, there's that smile. That's it. <laughs> well, no, you know, I, I did attend that meeting. I was invited to a, a, a technical assistance meeting, and that, that was the first thing that came out was, at the time, I believe it was four, 480 foster children, and there were less, little less than 50 licensed homes. And much less, I mean, there were less than, I think there were only 30 active ones. And so when you look at 30 active home, foster homes and about 500 foster children, so, so you ask yourself, well, where are these kids? And so what's what's going on with this is that, like Mayor Savars mentioned, that there are the, the government-run shelters, there are the, the nonprofit, uh, you know, organizations, and all of those places are full. And so they go to relative placement and that's if there's a grandparent or if there's an auntie or an uncle that's, you know, that could possibly take them in. So they certainly go there. But then what happens to the rest, right? And it, it made me think about it and it made me propose it to the council because like I mentioned before, we're so concerned about everything else in life, but we forget about the real lives that, that matter. I mean, these children, I mean, they're neglected, they're abused, they're innocent, it wasn't their fault. So how do we become, you know, how do we be good citizens and how do we be good role models to these children to, you know, ultimately live, you know, a fruitful life and, and become also contributing citizens in our society. And as mayors and vice mayors, day in and day out, like I said, we, we do all these different things and we see these children. I mean, we... Mayor Savars has to see these children. She she has forty five thousand people, and coming in and out of our offices, uh, in my small village, I do see the children as well. I mean, you know, and what do we do? So, this is the least that we can do as as leaders in our villages. Uh, I feel that, like Mayor Savars also mentioned, we know who we can reach out to personally. We want people to ask us questions. Uh, what you'll see in our PSAs and in, in, in our flyers that we'll, we'll push out through social media, it says to call your mayor's office. And it says to call your mayor's office because we would like every mayor's office to be equipped with the basic information so that we can get these interested people to an informational meeting or directly to public health. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's certainly our hope. And I know that at the very beginning, we we put a, a timeline and a deadline by December, by Christmas to get 19 families. And that's, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a big goal. And of course we don't want to, we don't want to sway from that, but at the same time, we won't stop. If, if by December we, we need to continue the campaign, we, we will continue uh, through May, 2022. And that's because there's, you know, everybody has like, when we first started it, we didn't even officially send any kind of PSA out or any kind of flyer, or we weren't really telling people to call us. People were already calling us and people were already reaching out. So uh, that's the awareness is, is what we would like. And so, and, and I want to thank KOAM because you did invite us to come and record and you did invite us to, to be a part of Giving Tuesday. And, and we're so grateful for the partnership because you know, people listen to you and we want people to listen to us as well. And as far as awareness and, and give us a call if we can help. I mean, if we can, if we can lead you to, to, uh, you know, public health or to Harvest House. Uh, um, Mayor Jesse, forgive me if this is an obvious answer, but um, do military families, can they, can they qualify as well? Cause I'm, I'm just thinking everybody, I mean, oh, yeah. many people would assume that when you say military, a military family, that would mean on the base, but yeah, there are many, there are many military families who live off base now. Oh, and they're they're a large part of our our foster care system. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I mean, they, there there are many of them. I think Mayor Ben Savars, Mayor Savars knows that. At our one of our first meetings, uh, I think Mayor Savars was a little alarmed at at, at the initial st statistics, kn knowing that uh, there were more actually military involvement. Uh, mm -hmm. And so now, you know, it is confirmed that for sure the military is a big part of this. Uh, Mayor Savars, did you want to add to that? Yeah, and you know. Um 
so we've seen, we've known several um, uh, active duty military who, when they're done in one command or squadron, they're looking at another command or squadron that they can transfer to so that they can stay longer. Uh, I, I know one individual that was here for eight years and he moved from one squadron to another and he, you know, it was, it was a promotion for him and an opportunity for him to stay a little longer. And, you know, his, both him and his wife, their families are both from stateside and, and for the U S mainland. And, but they, they were fostering. And so they wanted to stay as long as they could to help more children. And some of them uh, actually even adopt, Oh, there's been an adoption process because unfortunately the child couldn't go back to their their uh, biological homes. But um, you know we see you know that most a lot many do go back though mm -hmm. to their their families um, at the end of the fostering. But you know one thing that we need to remember is that you know they're coming to us in crisis. And, you know, some of them may have emotional issues because of the situation at home. So it's, it's about, like Mayor Alex said, mentoring them, embracing them, loving them, and caring for them like we would our own children. Which one of you came up with, with, with the title of it? Because when you say, like, the gift of family, I, just, I, I, I think that's brilliant. Because, I mean, is there any more valuable gift that you could give? Actually, it was Vice Mayor Kevin Delgado that proposed yeah. it. Well done, Mayor. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, yeah. Well, he wasn't able to join us this morning, but I know I was excited. Him. I thought we were going to get some singing on in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was, I was um, so excited. So, gosh, I, May no May offense, Mayor. Something and I wanted to add on to it, and I forgot what it was. Um, <laughs> I forgot what. It, oh, the goal of foster parent or foster care is reunification, and so we do want, in the end, the child to go back to their biological parents. But there's definitely those situations where foster parents end up adopting, right? And so, mm -hmm. is, is is that a possibility? It certainly is. And we we see that there are many infants that uh, you know are in that situation. As a matter of fact, I I know of one personally who has a child, a foster child, and uh, this this young girl has a a sibling, an infant sibling that is separated. And you know, so ultimately, they want to reunify that 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 family. Um, but again, public health is—they're the determining factors in this, and the courts, right? It's 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 really not us. What I do want to say, because I know it's already eight o'clock, um, <laughs> or eight o two, but uh, part of our campaign is is to really promote it out in the villages, and uh, that's where we're having our, our nineteen villages Christmas display contest, and so. Every mayor's office is challenged to to build a, a nice Christmas display at a prominent location in their village. And uh, there's three prizes, uh, first, second, and third prize. They're all cash prizes. Uh, I believe it's $2,000, and and $1,000. So it's, it's, it's a lot of cash. Uh, but the catch is that the cash is not gonna go to the, to the mayor's office uh, itself or the mayor or their staff. It's gonna, it should benefit the foster families in, within their community, right? Within their village. So whatever they win, it should benefit somehow and it should go towards the, the foster families within their communities. If they don't have any foster families or foster children in their village, then it, it still needs to be used towards a foster care initiative. And so we're excited about that. The The judging will be on December 12th at 6.30. Um, and I'd like to see how KUM can be a part of that too. I mean, you know, it'll be it'll be super cool to to see all our 19 villages decorated. We are um, in. We are absolutely yeah. in. <laughs> That's so cool. Done yeah, and done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're excited about that. And then um, I do want to bring in Vice Mayor Kevin Delgado maybe next week. Right on. And he can talk about another um, another part of what we're doing in December to kind of get to the to the faith-based organizations, the, the Archdiocese of Bagane and the other uh, denominations, because it really is kind of an infusion into their into their services that weekend of December 11 and 12 as well uh, for awareness and also hopefully we'll we'll spark some interest. Well, Mayor, we're always glad to help. Just let yeah. us know uh, what we got to do, where we got to go. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank so, you, Mayor Savaris. Sorry, sorry. Wait, real quick. I got, I got oh. one one teeny quick one since we have Mayor Savaris here. Mayor, do you, um, who is the organization who painted that beautiful mural 
uh, near the skate park, right across from um, uh, from Payless, uh, Liv Malik. That's gorgeous. Yeah. So what happened um, is we partnered with West Care, and West Care, uh, you know, West Care is our drug and alcohol prevention, uh, tobacco, and uh, for children. So sure. uh, youths fourteen, I believe it's fourteen to seventeen, participate. OPEG, they contracted OPEG to. Uh, to part to do a, a uh, art contest, so we had about fourteen kids that came out and participated in that art contest uh, workshop, and then they designed, they brainstormed, a, similar to strategic planning, they brainstormed, came up with a theme, and then so it was a partnership between Westcare, OPEG, um, Guam Home Center provided the paint, of course the Deddy Do Mayor's office, so. Uh, we'd just like to thank uh, West Care for initiating that. It's really, really beautiful. Like I, I, yes. I saw some kids when they were out there like painting and I was like, oh, wow, that's right. cool. And then, you know, like when it was done, I was like, wow, this this looks great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Well done. Thanks, Mayors. Okay. Adios. Okay. Have a good week. Have a good day. Have a good week. All right. Thank that's you. that. There you go. Monday morning. It's 806. So we're KUAM FM. I got in Guam and we're staying right here. Because there's, what is it, Jay, on uh, TV? Yeah, TV, we have sports coming up. I know we've got auto racing over on TV8 and uh, football. The foosball. Football. Is being, is being played over on KUM uh, TV11. All right. So Aaron Rodgers probably not playing today. <laughs> you may have heard. <laughs> there's 